To the contrary, no. The ayes have it. Films, videos and publications classification, interim restriction orders, amendment bill, third reading. I call on members' order of the day number two. Private international law, choice of law in tort bill, third reading. Madam Speaker, I move that the private international law, choice of law in tort bill now be read a third time. It is an honour to rise on this bill that is in my name, Private International Law, Choice of Law and Tort Bill. Madam Speaker, this bill may appear somewhat complex, but the truth is it simplifies matters regarding tort law. This bill adds significant improvements to the New Zealand legal system. Madam Speaker, the law of tort covers civil wrongs, whether intentional or otherwise, and it is a very important part of our legal system. As in all fields of law, issues arise, however, and solutions are required to improve the systems. One of those issues is of that of jurisdiction that applies um, when certain torts occur over multiple jurisdictions. For example, there is a case where multiple jurisdictions are involved. The question arises of which laws apply in the first instance. These matters are technical, but are nevertheless fundamental to ensuring an effective judicial system. This bill seeks to clarify these elements of confusion in tort law. There are four fundamental changes to tort law presented by this bill. The first is to abolish a rule referred to as double actionability. This is a somewhat archaic rule passed down from our common law heritage with England. When a tort claim is brought in New Zealand for an action committed in another jurisdiction, the New Zealand court can only hear the claim if the tort is actionable in both jurisdictions. It then must apply New Zealand law unless the other country has the more significant relationship with both the occurrence and the parties. This private international law bill abolishes this double actionability rule under Clause 6. Legal professionals have long called for reform as the law is widely known as being difficult to apply and understands. The bill takes away, but it also creates. With the double actionability rule abolished, Clause 7 of the bill creates the general rule that will be used in situations where the intent of the double actionability rule would have previously been applied. In essence, Clause 7.1 establishes the place of wrongdoing rule, um, in which the applicable law is the law of the jurisdiction in which the events cons constituting the tort in question occur. Put simply, if the event happened in the UK, the UK's laws apply. This is the second change brought about this bill, and it is a sensible and logical rule. It is what you would expect of our judicial system. Clause 7.2 goes into more detail, saying where elements for those events occur in different jurisdictions, the applicable law under the general rule is taken as being A, for a cause of action in respect of damage to property, the law of the jurisdiction where the property was when it was damaged. This bill abolishes the complex double actionability rule that has no place in the modern legal system. Subsequently, it creates a new multi-purpose regime that addresses two central elements encompassed within tort law, damages to property and general cases. Madam Speaker, this bill doesn't stop with simply establishing this reg regime. It adds a dynamic mechanism to ensure flexibility in the system's approach. As the fourth and final element of this bill, this mechanism provides an exemption to the place of wrongdoing rule, allowing a court to apply the law of another jurisdiction where it is substantially more appropriate to do so. In essence, the bill gives the court the ability to look at complex circumstances and judge whether the regime this bill creates determines the proper jurisdiction and whether a different course of action may be more appropriate. This is clarified in Clause 8, which has two main elements. The first is A, the significance of the factors that connect a tort with the jurisdiction whose law would be the applicable law under the general rule. And the second part is B, the significance of any factors connecting the tort with another jurisdiction. 
once both are satisfied, if it is substantially more appropriate for the applicable law for determining, determining the issues arising in the case or any of those issues to be the law of another jurisdiction. The, rule, the general rule is displaced. Madam Speaker, I have personal connection um, and appreciation of the domain of tort law from my um, previous experiences, experiences studying it and practicing it. And I am conscious of the complexity and nuances of tort law. Um, I am consequently aware of the impact of the small yet significant bill among legal circles, especially those who specialize in tort law. Um, I would like to thank those involved in working on this bill. Firstly, the wonderful clerks of the previous Justice and Electoral uh, Select Committee of the 51st Parliament, Shenia, uh, Tamara and Jess. And I would also like to thank the Ministry of Justice officials for their assistance on this bill, um, especially throughout um, the committee stage. Thank you uh, to the then members of the Justice and Electoral Select Committee. We've heard much praise of them in the last um, reading of the last bill heard. Um, it was a fantastic and collegial Select Committee in the first, uh, 51st Parliament. Um, John O'Naylor, who has since retired, was my deputy um, and an excellent deputy at that. And I'd also like to um, pay tribute to the previous members, some of whom have retired or are in, in, in absentia from this parliament, Paul Foster Bell, Chris Bishop, Maureen Pugh, Marima Fox, Jacinda Ardern, Louisa Wall, Materia Ture and Dennis O'Rourke, who have all um, provided valuable contributions on this bill. And finally, I'd like to thank uh, two submitters uh, to this bill. Firstly, the New Zealand uh, Law Society, and secondly, Professor Campbell McLaughlin, QC, Jack Wass, and Dr. Maria Hook. Um, I'd also like to personally thank Maria Hook uh, for her dedication to the bill, especially with regards to its interaction to the Accident uh, Compensation Act. So to conclude, I think that this is an excellent piece of legislation. It has been uh, well thought through um, and confidently developed um, through select committee and debated in this House. The four elements of this bill simply previous uh, simply um, simplify the complex um, aspects of tort law when international jurisdictions apply. And with that, I commend this bill to the House. I call Dr Duncan Webb. Thank you, Madam Speaker. And uh, my first...